Thank you so much, Zoe. Guys at the desk, I have to agree. But he, but, uh, but Danny. All right. It, but Sorry. Danny, yeah, because because rain right now, if you look at the way this backlight, I mean, Fielder and Chio are insane. They have the flexibility with Vigilante yep. too. They could play so many different comps, but the shock also with the rookies have had such a tough start already at the beginning. They had that insane game five series to kick off the season for us, Necra. So like go the distance. And now they have to play probably the best team right now in the league. I mean, this is what really determines it and kind of what sets up these teams with their head start for the season. I think Dallas Fuel, after what we witnessed this morning, really wished Fielder and Chio were still on their roster. Because <laughs> oh. in a meta where the supports are so important, that's definitely a backline you want to keep your eyes on. And I think when you look at how they're able to enable a team like the Atlanta Reign, it's just going to be really tough to determine how these two rosters are going to stack up against each other. But I think at the end of the day, yeah, Atlanta Reign are here to make a statement. That's what they want out of the season. And San Francisco Shock as well, they don't want to... They don't want to go home here. They they, they don't want to loss. Like the other these teams are here to really duke it out. I'm just so glad that we get to see this Titan of a match, Necro. There's so much. I mean, we get to see Lip versus Proper. Stalker out here too, with how close those tracer stats were that Jake was able to demonstrate for us. Crazy close tracer stats with Proper yep. right there side by side. Let's see how this fares out now. Yeah. Starting out the gates already for us, Necro. We're con going on to Oasis to really kick off the action. Yeah, so it makes sense why Chio would be in the roster to start out for the Atlanta Reign, known for his Lucio play, and Vindame is going to be able to match that as well. Oh. But there's why! There's why! We have Chio on the Lucio! Holy crap! <laughs> knock, knock! All right! There's that fuel backline that they were definitely missing, Necro. You talked about it earlier. I mean, for all the right reasons, Chi already with that first pick as the control point is going to get unlocked already as the rain have controlled all that space. See the Vortex coming out, the ramps to duke it out here too. That brawl comp that we were expecting. Hawk gets hit with a huge anti. Nice time though on the immortality field from Fielder. Chio falls incredibly low. When you see that damage output now coming into trade as proper also managed to get away just in time. The way that both these teams are duking it out, I like the positioning that we're currently seeing from the rain. While the shock may try to opt to go for the high ground approach, maybe a little bit, oh. but I wouldn't want to go up oh. there if Chio's going to be right there behind you because that's going to be a really quick takedown. If Chio has anything to say about that, such an aggressive Lucio play. Oh my goodness, with the answer right back from Finn and Vin Dame, who goes down immediately afterwards. It's Mr. LAP himself, Lip, taking care of the back line. It looked great for the shock at the start of that, that fight there, Necro, but man, the answer back from Lip has also allowed him to have that EMP for that next fight. I mean, Lip is one of the best Sombras in the league. Uh, stats show that. The example that we just saw here absolutely backs that up. And when you are the San Francisco Shock and you're looking at a way to contend with that Sombra, Bruh, you don't run one of your own. EMP coming in. See Proper immediately taking care of Stalker, not having the impact that the rain really wanted. Yeah, they got that 61% and climbing Vindame now finding Hawk. It's the answer back here from the shock when they finally make their move on the point. All right, so that was a quick test. You know, Atlanta Rain went ahead and let the EMP rip, but they didn't throw anything else at that fight. So while the EMP itself didn't necessarily pay off, it was able to get out the nano boost as well as the sound barrier from the back line of the San Francisco Shock. And I think you take that trade any day of the week. Proper's going to get a nice pick, though, to keep the defense strong here of the Shock and force Atlanta Rain to take yet another breath before they enter in again. But this time, the Atlanta Rain are coming in with four ultimates to Despair. And I'm really looking at the May Blizzard as well as that Ramatra Annihilation to really help to get some crowd control in here. We've called it out too with Vidame and Finn not having those ults for this upcoming fight. Now Hawk gets taken down right before the Annihilation was able to be unleashed. Jumping can now hold on to his gear, controlling this choke point. Stalker also still has that blizzard. They're gonna be holding on to it now with the shock still in control over this point. Vin Dame has been duking it out here on this high ground platform, trying to match up with Chio, who also likes to take the same approach. But thing is here, Necro Proper is right beside him to help him out, get him into position if necessary. Absolutely, an early annihilation here too. 
Early Annihilation and the Blizzard coming in immediately right afterwards. Stalker with the headies onto Junfin and Finn. The cleanup from Rain as the retake comes in from the rest of the team, clearing out the entirety of the shock. Oh, that was such smart ultimate usage on both sides. The Annihilation looked really good just for Shock to play a bit more aggressively. But then the answer of the Blizzard made it so that Shock didn't really have a way to be able to follow up on the Annihilation damage coming through there from Jumpin. Now Rain can do the same thing. And they also have the EMP to be able to follow that up too. They're trying to get that hack here. Talk about the EMP that they have ready. Final fight territory in favor for the Rain here. 95% nano boost onto Junbin. Proper taking damage, huge EMP fighting for, including that backline. Ben Dame would have loved to try Proper? to get that sound barrier quick enough. Proper though, still finding Hawk, but it's not going to be enough here. Overtime taking away as Fielder finds Ben Dame and Proper. Vortex coming out. He tries to get away, but nobody touched thanks to that Maywall from Stalker. Great showcase here with the way that Ray was also able to kind of rotate and move in with those ults. That EMP, that first one, may not have had that impact necro, but that second one definitely did with that four-man EMP. Yeah, absolutely. I think it just really set up the Atlanta Rain to be able to follow up onto all of that damage when you look at not only the EMP coming through, but then you also had the ability of Fielder to just kind of use those Moon Boots, grab that 2k, and took out some really high quality targets there when you know that Proper and Vindame have been playing together for most of that round. Just kind of rotating around on that high ground and then trying to make something work there. Looks like as we enter, enter into our Gardens round, though, of Oasis, we've got yet another look coming out from both of our teams. It's going to be Junker Queen as the tank of choice. It's interesting, too. We're also seeing the Kiriko come out. And both Finn and Fielder, the control over the high ground. Quick to get on top of it, Necker. It's going to be the rain first. We are seeing Proper now going over to the Ash. He's saying, really having that strong hit scan hero pool that he could really work with, playing more of that flex and playing close quarters here is Chio. Look at his movement. He is dancing on this wall, waiting for an opportunity. Do you really want to contest Chio here when he could get an environmental kill right now? But this is against Vin Dave, who is the one that gets right through that entry point first. Hawk finding this fight in these close quarters like he was expecting originally. He's like doing the same thing, but finding Chio first is huge here for the Shock. Yes, the rank get the point, but they gave up some of that extra space to allow the Shock to take control over that fight in that side room. Yeah, you're just looking at Proper being able to get set up there with the Ash, and not only that, but he's staying in a position to follow up on that frontline damage coming through from Jumpin's Junker Queen. And this is a really great look here from the Shock to just kind of control these choke points. Whether you're looking at main or looking at that side room that Hawk is looking to try to rotate through, He's saying is there, already just trying to get some poke damage down onto the team and build up to that Death Blossom. Some really high quality ultimates here in both of the DPS line that could really help us flip these fights. I'm just so quick with these hacks. He hacks Finn and hacks Vin Dame right afterwards here. Here comes the shout too, but Lip finding Vin Dame. He's saying going to beat him right back in the spawn after that rush is called in from Fielder. Rain holding on to so much for that next fight. Despite Lip going down, the rest of the Rain are still alive, having the number advantage, selling out Finn and taking control over the point. Something that Atlanta Rain and San Francisco Shock have been really good at is patience. Atlanta Rain only used the Kiriko ultimate there to be able to get that point flip back. And San Francisco Shock, after losing a few members, recognized that they wouldn't have to or have the opportunity to actually throw in any ultimates of their own and find value. So save them now, but Vindy oh gets hit. Oh my, huge. He bought the entire team with that EMP. And then the shell to put them right back into position. And didn't have to word anything else other than that EMP. It's like what you mentioned before. They used the rush in that previous fight. Now they only use the EMP, so they're cycling through their ults. So good here for that next fight. They're going to have that pulse bomb and hawk with that ult at the ready with the rampage. Yeah, and, and like what a nice way to kind of counter out the Kitsune rush as well. Finn decides to lay that down. Not only do you have the sound bear from Chio, but then you also have the Junker Queen ult. You can see the commanding shout already come through here, though, from Hawk just to make sure that he can stay up as the bob hits the floor. 
Bob acting as a six man here for the rest of the shot clearing some of that extra space. I like the disengage called in from Rain though. Take care of Bob after he's out of the field. And the sound barrier come, came, comes in here too as the Rampage also comes in from Jumpman. It did land on the Hawk. I like the fall from Vin Dame after the rush was also activated from Finn. It set the shock into position and they now have found Stalker. Lip falls low, Fielder and Shield still on the point. Make actually let's go right back to the rest of the team. Just give this to Shock for right now. Ready at 68% as Fielder's just delaying it. Yeah, Fielder at this point is honestly just trying to keep a little bit of pressure onto the field so that we don't see a big rotation from Shock to take full control of this high ground. Especially knowing that he's saying has that ultimate ready to go. He's looking for the perfect opportunity. He wanted it. He finds Chio after that first pick. He thought it was enough here, but Stalker and Fielder were right there with the Kitsune Rush to counter that right afterwards. Rain clear out the rest of the shock. They were at 92% in Earth and now Rain rounding that 75% mark. They are, and entering into last fight territory with an EMP in their back pocket. So what a nice way to be able to try to close out this very first map here for the Rain. But we're seeing a very interesting rock, paper, scissors switch to Hisang oh. on the Torbjorn. Yeah, you can lay down the turret, you can make sure that Lip can't surprise you when you are able to come through. Oh, I don't think it's gonna even matter at this point when you have the EMP ready to still delete He Sang. He did find three originally with that EMP. Faint Dame goes down, the rest of the rain looking like they are massacring the shock. Overtime taken away in favor for the rain while they're looking for their first map victory. Proper does manage to find Fielder, but it's not gonna be enough. Nobody's left from the shock to contest as the Atlanta rain take map number one. What smart ultimate usage, great opening picks coming through from Stalker and Lip, and honestly, Chio. let's give the Lucio player a little bit of credit there for some of the environmentals that he was able to grab. Just excellent teamwork all around, and when you got a Sombra like that on your team, Vicky, I feel like it's not, it, it, it's hard. Like, what do you do against a Sombra that's that good? Necra. Lip hacked 30 enemies, EMP'd 15. The impact was actually insane here. Died, I think, only twice, by the way, yeah. in those two rounds. It's so on top of that, it, the survivability is just on another level. And you talked about a nice list here too. The rotations of ultimates that we saw between these fights, not burning everything. We saw the rush originally here, and then we saw the rampage and the fight right after this. It's the impact that they know that they have without having to utilize everything that allowed this team to stay on top, even when they gave some of that extra space over to the Shock Negra. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen a couple of teams now maybe try to throw three ultimates or four ultimates at a fight where they really only needed half of that. And Rain putting on a clinic of exactly how to get it done when the advantage is in your favor. So one map up for the rain. It, this is this is so much pressure on the rookies on the side of the shock. I mean, you have so much on your shoulders. He's saying having to try to match that mm -hmm. with Stalker and Lip. I know we see what Proper could do, but it's still a lot of a hill to climb here for the San Francisco shock. We're moving on to map number two on Hollywood, and that'll be on the other side of this break.
Welcome back, everybody, to a banger of a match. We just saw right now Atlanta Rain Cake, map number one on Oasis, and we are moving on to map number two with some change-ups here after seeing that hype video from the Atlanta Rain. Yep, Hawk is going to be taking a little bit of a breather as we bring Dong Hawk now into the roster. And we saw this look from the Atlanta Rain yesterday during their match versus the New York Excelsior, where Dong Hawk came into the roster to be able to play the Winston, and we ended up seeing some follow-up there from a somber tracer dive as we look at our map set i feel like that makes a lot of sense yeah honestly too seeing what we could expect from this insane ball player who went winston yesterday like you talked about works into the reigns play style as we approach hollywood now can you expect anything different coming in from the san francisco shock though necro of course we're not seeing any change ups in terms of subs but in their approach of what we're could expect between this dps lineup and of obviously the impact that we've been seeing from chio well, something that we saw during San Francisco Shock's match versus the Toronto Defiant is they showed off so many different looks for their roster. So I don't necessarily know what to expect from them coming out on Hollywood because Jumpin showed us the Ramatra, Junker Queen, Diva, Winston, Zarya, Doomfist, like yeah. honestly everything under the sun there in terms of that tank role, which I think provides them a lot of flexibility but I think they also need to start to lean into a composition that they feel confident and comfortable in. And maybe for them, that is the Junker Queen. Junker Queen has is able to offer something that I feel like some of the other tank heroes are not when it comes down to the Rampage being able to give anti-heal to the team of the Atlanta Reign. Especially when you're looking at Fielder and Chiyo in the back line, you know they're pumping out healing as much as they're pumping out the damage. And then you got the follow-up to delay that too with another anti from Finn on top of that rampage. Yeah. A, a lot going around to prevent that healing from getting pumped out onto the rest of the rain. Again, those stats were absolutely insane after that first map. Let's get started here with the rain. Contesting on the attack first while the shock are getting into position on this defense here. You can see Heesang already in the back line on the Hanzo swap. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to go for the similar approach to what they took in map number one of Oasis. Uh, San Francisco Shock, they just want to try to go for some of those Hanzo snipes, but more of the same here from the Atlanta Rain that brought them success yesterday. Except uh, they're going to switch things up as well. Looks like maybe Lip going over to the Hanzo and feeling a little more confident on that versus... Maybe the uh, the Junker Queen and the and the Ana. Maybe not feeling like there's a good opportunity for him to actually access the back line without taking too much risk. I like that change up here now too. He's gonna be able to have those sight lines coming in through that initial choke point here. Look at him. He's already got it on top of the high ground. Oh, and the follow-up that we're also seeing from Stalker to split up more attention away from Heesang, preventing him from getting into position. A counter-rotate comes in from Shock, forcing Lip and the rest of the rain to start rotating from the low ground here. Off of getting out of that situation with that recall real quick. While Chio's taking a quick nap here too, it's just rain trying to figure out whether they want to try to contest with Stalker, trying to harass the backline, or they're going to be able to push forward. And with that first pick, Necra, they're already going to be able to contest after that shell. Losing out on Vindane now, the Shock trying to recontest. They do trade that out for Stalker. Yeah, I think Stalker is still easier to get back to the point, though, versus what we're seeing from the San Francisco Shock. And Atlanta Rain have very small window of time here that they can take advantage of that player difference. This contention that we're seeing right here by the stairwell is a Nana Boost comes in from Fielder onto Donghak, helping out the survivability as he immediately gets put to sleep, but he gets woken up immediately right afterwards. Lip also getting that final pick onto Finn, hitting his head, while Proper in the back is also able to retaliate right back. The rest of the rain now are going to be able to retake this point, get this payload moving, and you're going to really see Dongak moving all the way up so that way he can contest where the Shock are going to be coming out from the spawn. Yep. I mean, when you're that close to the Primal Rage as well, you may as well try to get in that last little bit of body block and then come back to be able to help bolster up your team. Atlanta Rain have been able to walk away with quite a bit of ultimate charge here, though. As you look at the Pulse Bomb being available, Dunghack's Primal Rage, Lip actually making a bit of a switch up, going over to the Widowmaker. And boy, am I excited about this one, Vicky. I feel like Lip always puts on a show for us, whether it's on the Sombra or the Widowmaker. Especially the Widow there, too, because we saw that there was that diff between Lip and Hisang on the Hanzo. 
See if we can find a different angle onto Keysang, who's gonna try to get out of his LOS. Oh, and he does find that cheeky pick onto the head off of Keysang's shoulders. Jumping right on top of him now is gonna be Junbin. The rush as the rally comes in from Chio to answer right back. The number advantage still in favor for the rain as Chio cleans up the rest of the jump attempt from Junbin and Vindame. Finn's gonna meet them right back in spawn and what a takeover here for the rain to clear out that next corner because this high ground could be so troublesome to get through once you get that payload around that corner. Absolutely, and you're gonna see Lip try to make sure that that high ground stays checked. Maybe even Fielder if you end up using some of the elevators to be able to get up to to the high ground access there. And so I think that's a really great hiding place for those players, but you're also, oh, oh my God. Oh, and then you also see Donghak right in front of their face who gets yep. put to sleep, but he put the bubble down originally there too. He manages to get away after popping the primal. Nano boost that was online here from Finn that was already used up. Now Fielder has his right afterwards. Get Donghak right back in, help him clear out the rest of this point here as Proper falls incredibly low. He gets taken out after he finds Fielder. They trade that now. Body for body, jump in falls low. See Lip in the back end trying to get him off him here too as they're able to get to that second point now, Necker. It looks like it's been non-stop after Lip had made that transition over to the Widow, getting those essential first picks. Absolutely, and this is just momentum and that Amanda Rain are working with right now. And absolutely, <laughs> like Chio, uh, everybody, honestly, getting their hands in the mix here on the Atlanta Rain, trying to grab these final blows and eliminations, and it is working. At this point, the shock, they just need a moment to breathe, and they're not getting one. They're already on the high ground. Atlanta Rain are just up there on the, I don't, catwalk. I guess is that I guess it's a catwalk. Yeah, they, yeah, they just don't want right Shock there. to have any of the high ground. But look at the respects trying to not be in that middle line of sight on the catwalk because they know Lip is looking down mid here too. Proper trying to contest some spits of attention, maybe give some time and room for his team to at least get into a better position. See jumping, jumping down, putting down the dome here as Vindame falls incredibly low. They did lose out on Hisang, who was originally on the high ground. Donghak booting him out. Donghak also creating so much space while the rest of the shock are fixing it on Donghak. They're leaving their side open for Lip to just take advantage. Rally now activated as the dragons get unleashed from Keysang. Nice anti. Now that forced out Lip to get taken out with proper getting the follow up onto Fielder as well. Some time and some room to breathe for the first time that shock can say with the rain that have been nonstop pushing this payload since they got it moving originally next round. Yeah, they're gonna take a little bit of a pause and they're also going to switch Lip over to the Cassidy. Cassidy is one of those heroes that we saw high usage during the Pro-Am, but it did receive a little bit of a change to that magnetic grenade, so just not quite as strong. But Lip's aim is still true, and so it's still going to provide a lot of value and during into these final portions of the map where you still have the mobility access there with the roll, but you also have access to a lot of damage. And an HP change too, and I like the answer because it's an answer to proper. It's not just Geo here, it's an Adam yep. who's just put onto Donghek. He's got that primal as he jumps right on top of Heesang, trying to run right back to the spawn. Vindame trying to protect them here too, as he also puts the Nano Boots onto Junvin. Donghek still has the primal though. Junvin's gonna try to match that eventually here, but it's the first pick to have it come through yet. The proper hasn't been put into the right position. The disengage originally from Rain to split up as Lip tries to call out proper. He was forced out with the recall, so now he has to wait less than those 10 seconds to try to re-engage. Still a minute and a half on the clock here for the Atlanta Rain to try to push this all the way in. And we're gonna see some ultimates being used here now. A rally called in from Vindame while Chio fell incredibly low. Proper took advantage, getting the follow up with Jun Vin, who popped the primal. It's primal for primal, but Rain doesn't have that sustainability. They lose out on their back line. More time wasted away from the Rain. You got a minute and less than that now with that re engage from the Rain once they come right back in with Lib's ult. So Lip's ult could be really impactful here, just to be able to buy some space. You're not necessarily looking for a high impact kill. You're just looking at the high noon to be able to help push some of that San Francisco shock back and allow for Stalker to get into the back line. Donghak as well is able to just walk forward instead of being investing cooldowns into reaching some of those harder to reach places at the back half of the map. So we'll see Lip try to go in for the high noon as quickly as possible. Oh, 
man, but that's such a huge pick, and you take care of both of the backline proper set. I'll make the swap right over to the <laughs> Tracer. No worries. He's going to be the one to be on the Hanzo this map around, and not only taking care of the backline, but at least for this rally coming up for this final fight for the rain, this is what they need to rely on and if they have the opportunity if proper doesn't harass them again. Yeah, look at that. Actually, just for going the Cassidy completely in favor of the Sombra to hopefully throw that translocator and sneak their way over to the payload, but I don't oh, think they can get, get right there. there. Oh, oh just right in barely. time. Yes, he forces out the overtime, but is it enough now as Dongak jumps in? They did lose out on Stalker, but that's the first person that's fine to lose out on because he'll get right back in quickly. They gotta oh, force his overtime, keep it in check. Dongak got hit with a huge anti from Finn after that Nana boost also came online here. Dongak goes down, unfortunately, he won't have the primal for this fight. To try to keep him alive for as long as possible while Chio also trying to contest Jumbin, who had the primal ready for this final fight, Necra. On top of that, Vin Dame with the rally. They successfully hold back the rain from getting this payload to the finish line, but man, they had to wait to the very end to start forcing the rain to trickle in and make those adjustments. Yes, Shock just kind of put on the pressure, really didn't allow the Atlanta rain there to have any time to set up with their ultimate. So that's why we didn't see the high noon. We ended up seeing that switch over because we were running out of time at the very end there. And so you're losing a lot of ultimate charge, but you're also losing a lot of momentum. So as soon as the shock were able to stop Atlanta rain in that third point, that's really when they were able to like dig their heels into the sand and figure out exactly how to keep Atlanta rain from finishing the map. But they still almost finished the map. They, they they still almost finished the map. They did, man. But the moment that Proper was able to take advantage of Lip making the swap, taking a look at the replay from Proper at the very end, the last two fights, every time, he found Chio and Fielder. Gets yep. that Pulse Bomb stick, found Fielder in the back right there. Again, it's always at the end. He says, I'm changing things up a little bit. Yeah. Died twice, by the way, in that last <laughs> round that we just saw. So there was that change up that we got to see because it didn't look like that at the very beginning. No, it didn't. But I love that you called that out, that originally it was actually no tracer at all to be found on the shock when we looked at Oasis as our very first map. And really, when you looked at the Hanzo, that was being played by proper. And then we did a little bit of a roll swap here. Just as a reminder to everybody, if you missed it from last season, one of Proper's absolute best heroes was the Tracer. That's just why he was the MVP, the Roll Star, the Alarm Rookie of the Year, just kind of grabbing everything on the Infinity Gauntlet there. And he's gonna have to show up really big here as well, Vicky. Yeah, but Stalker was right there when it came to those Tracer stats here too, and they've cleared up the entire side approach from the shock. Look how Donghut's moving all the way up to. He is on base. He's proper on the high ground. Jumps right back to the rest of the rain, but they did lose out on Lip, which is pretty crucial because they want to play into that win con with the EMP Necro. Yeah, I think the EMP is an absolutely huge piece of the puzzle here, and especially when we see Atlanta Rain playing it on the defense. There's way more room for Lip to maneuver around the map versus trying to access this mini pack room that we see Fielder shooting out of. See Fielder seeing and calling out Junbin from trying to contest him in that side room. Helping him out is Chio. He got hit with an anti and the shield bash on top of it. Chio having a good time in that side room as the back line is taken care of. I like Shock prioritizing the threat that was from map number one, which was this back line from the Atlanta Reign. And even though they did lose out on their own back line, here is Proper. He's got the pulls from Relly trying to call out Lip. We we'll that EMP for the next fight after taking care of Stalker. I wonder if there's a wear up that we ended up seeing Atlanta Rain actually come back in and recontest this because Proper, while he is super, super good, is definitely not able to do this on his own. Even if he was able to get a big pick with the Pulse Bomb, look at how much sustain Atlanta Rain put into this one so they can hit the EMP. Oh, and crucially hits the EMP on the back lane there too, costing Finn Dame and Finn his life. Kisek was also inside of that EMP, so he goes down too. Like you mentioned, Ekar, it can't be just proper. Even though the shock did clear out and proper was able to stay on that point for so long, the rest of the rain were also able to regroup and be able to clear out the rest of that point when they were on that defense here too. Zonglak does get hacked. He can't leap away just yet, but he manages to get away in time into the line of sight of Fielder and Geo. Yeah, good stuff right there to be able to get back to the team, but Lip gets taken out. Maybe not one of the more crucial pieces of the Atlanta rain composition here, especially when they do have ultimates to spare. So we see the nano boost fly for Fielder. 
and taking care of Finn first is, is huge because now Vendame will have the rally. Finn will be able to use the nano boost. Yes, Chiyo did use the rally here too, so it was a pretty expensive fight for the rain, which will allow Shock mm -hmm. to re recontest on that point with Finn's nano boost. Yeah, I love that you called out the Brigida rally there because I feel that it might have been a bit of an overcommit of the ultimates, but when you're also looking at a one minute mark for how much time San Francisco Shock have left to be able to approach this point, and they're also working up to an EMP of their own. I mean, you don't want to just hold on to your ultimates here. I think you're expecting that, yeah, Shock may be grabbing this first point unless you're able to win out on raw mechanical skill, but then you have your own ultimates for that second phase. I love the repositioning, the disengage immediately after losing out on Lip. Yes, they gave that space over to the Shock. They're finally getting their first ping, approaching that second one here too on the point. Soccer's gonna be able to re-engage now that Lip is gonna try to recontest here with the rest of the rain. Less than 30 seconds on clock for the Shock to get this payload moving. See how they're trying to contest here on the side room is huge here and proper and Stalker gets the trade for both supports between Fielder and Finn Dame. Meanwhile, Finn still has that nano boost. He puts it on to Junbin now, helping him stay alive. Fielder doesn't have that nano boost to change things up. Here comes Heesang with the EMP, which costs Dong Heck his life. There's a difference maker here because the space is being bought in from Junbin. So close to getting this payload moving now, Necro. Less than 10 seconds for the shock to finally get some of that progress. But trickling down is the rain who wasted so much of their time as they finally get it moving. I think that's okay, right? Atlanta Rain is that's exactly what they wanted to play for, just getting as much time off of the clock as possible. Unfortunately, they are gonna get a little staggered there as we had a couple of close respawns that San Francisco Shock capitalized on. But at the end of the day, this is what the sh Rain wanted to play for. Less time for the streets phase. It seemed a little inevitable that Shock were gonna be able to take that first point and get the payload unlocked and moving. So, why not? You get the EMP out, Nano's gone, Rally's gone. Really just looking at Jump In's Primal Rage right now, and he's hacked, and you also now know he has it. And because it didn't stagger with those ults here, too, they could contest here with Lip's EMP. Donghank has yeah. that Primal Fielder's about to get that Nano boost, as well as Geo with the Rally. Great got looks a lot. here for the Atlanta Rain. Yeah, they got basically everything to work with here. Lips waiting for the opportunity with the EMP, trying to call out the back line as he finds Finn Dame, tries to take care of Finn Dame, but he manages to get away with the shield bash there too as a threat inside that side room. Doesn't get the follow up with the rest of the rain that they want to do with that EMP, and it's shocked that counter rotates on the high ground to try to call out Fielder, who needs some help. He jumps down from the high ground. He's got that nano boost just in case. Here comes Dontak to help him out, but a nice reposition for Fielder to prevent Junbin from har harassing him. Yeah, that's what you got to do as the Winston, right? It's your single tank. You have a little bit of a split responsibility of helping out your front line, but then also peeling if your back line needs the help. Rally, though, from Chio to kick off this next phase of the fight. And losing out on Finn is huge here because they won't have the Nana boost for this fight, and they have the number advantage. So less than 50 seconds on the clock, ready for the Shock to get to this second point. And Chio giving us a quick hello, feeling himself <laughs> while they also regain on the high ground. Yeah, you gotta set up here and just kind of get your vantage point on where the shock may want to come from. And you also have to play split up. That EMP has a defined range of effect. And if you're able to play as split up as the rain are, you make yourself a little less vulnerable to getting hit by such a massive fight winning ultimate. Especially when there's 20 seconds remaining, you know shock has to throw everything at this one. From the ante to the nano Whoa. boost onto Dong Hack finding jump in huge here with less than 10 seconds now on the clock for the rest of Shock to group up on this payload, force it into order of time. That's gonna be proper job here. He's saying needs to go crazy with his EMP as Finn also gets taken out. Dong Hack showcasing what he can do best. It ain't just the ball that he's known for from back in the T2 days. It's that Winston now that he's keeping the rain alive with. Love these picks that we're seeing. Proper does trade that. Chio Binde. We did see that hack though. The EMP from He's saying may have just enabled Proper to turn things around. We're seeing the pieces fall, but it's not going to be enough here, Necra. Rain still have Donghak and Fielder alive on this payload. Ooh, and oh, still alive on the Oh, they're contesting it! Down to the wire, overtime taking away! They're forced to disengage and need the rest of the rain to regroup with them. But this may be delaying the inevitable, but this is still gonna allow the shock to reset too. Yeah, I mean, the shock might actually be able to get the EMP oh. online if they're lucky. 
see if he can get it again. He literally just used it. Not in the fast fence, but the fight right before that to cause the overtime to happen. As it's still activated right now, they did lose out on Infant Damon. Finn, they don't have the sustainability. Unlike Rain, Chio's also about to get the rally. Nobody left in sight as the Atlanta Rain in overtime were able to take care of the San Francisco Shock, taking map number two on Hollywood. Oh, that was so close at the very end there. I thought that the San Francisco Shock, after giving Yisang the Nano, might have been able to get another EMP online. It was so close, Vicky. It was, he was like 3% away. Heartbreaking. Literally at the edge of my seat, Necra. And if you could compare the proper stalker stacks, by the way, I think they had the same amount of E-limbs. They were literally just over, like, I think 100 damage away from matching each other. It was so incredibly close yeah. here, but the difference was Lip versus He Sang. Even though we saw He Sang in that final moment for the overtime, get that EMP. That difference maker here was looking at the impact Dong Hack had to at the very final fight. Chi on Fielder also having their ultimates online between the Nano Boost and the Rally. Oof, man, what a map <laughs> number two. Yeah, what a map number two right there. And this is what we expected out of two of the teams touted at the top of their class for the Overwatch League 2023 season. But Vicky, it kind of seems like Atlanta Rain may be starting to run away with things a little bit. I hope the Shock can bring it back. Yeah, it's the change up that we got to see from the San Francisco Shock while Atlanta Rain sit at match points. We're moving on to Junkertown and that'll be here right after this break.
Sports League champions. San Francisco Sharks, Proper. Proper is a generational talent. He's going to be in this league for a long time. Look at this guy. He is just, he's running down Bernard. Then he just charges the Sigma. Completely uncontested, tearing through. Coming up. Gendo ah. tried his best, but it's not going to be enough. Finn is feeling himself. Look at him. Chat, but only affects him. Rampage's going to catch up a two from Kellum, but Proper is there. Oh, my. Oh, my. Welcome back, everybody. You guys saw it first with the San Francisco Shock video. They are literally fighting for their lives against the Atlanta Reign that are currently sitting at match point. Moving on to map number three, Necra, and it's going to be Junker Town, and we do see some change-ups coming in from the Reign. Yep, we had Dong Hawk playing on the Atlanta Reign roster for that map of Hollywood, and now we've got Hawk taking back up the Reigns for the tank role. And this kind of tells me that we're going to see some Sigma. That seems mm -hmm. like a pretty safe bet, knowing that we're going over to Junkertown and that Hawk is super proficient on those, uh, I guess, historically considered off-tank heroes. If we were going to talk about the matchup of what we've been seeing so far between the Shock at the very end, with Proper doing his best on the Tracer, we're seeing from Hisang trying to match Lip on the Sombra Necra. You just can't. Like, this is mm -hmm. Lip that we're talking about on the Sombra. And when you're he saying he lacks covering more of the hit scan department, which forces Proper to be more flexible. But then you have Stalker matching your stats, basically evening things out from the performance that we've been seeing from his Tracer, Stalker standing out in the same way. It's so difficult to say what Shock needs to do differently here, because if you are intending to try to match Lip on the Sombra, good luck, because it's going to be difficult out here, especially when the Rain are already sitting at match point. I agree with that, and I think that's one of the reasons why we ended up seeing Shock actually lean on a composition for Oasis that didn't involve the Sombra at all. In fact, it was more of like the May, the Reaper, proper on Hanzo and Ash. And I think the Sombra look here from the Shock has not necessarily been up to par with what the we've ended up seeing coming out from Lip on that Sombra. We actually see Hawk on the Diva here. This is another hero that Hawk is very, very well known for. And seeing jump in on the Winston, the Diva feels like the perfect pick because you also have access to Proper's Widowmaker, which is a really great way to contend with that. Definitely agree, especially since you have the open sight lines Junker Chunk provides when you're on that higher ground, but you could already see Proper looking to his back just in case Lip is right there. Lip did manage to teleport away on time as Jumping gets put to sleep. We're going to right afterwards here. He's going to back away in time. Putting down that shield. Look at the back line. Look what they're doing to Proper. It's Lip and I believe Stalker now that have made his way on top of that high ground platform, but they've essentially tried to force the Shock to play split up and that didn't deter Proper. He's still trying to find Lip. Lip is just staring at him from the side. Now you see me? Now you don't. Manages to try to contest him over on the side, but Proper did get that initial first pick here. They do trade that for Hisang, who's going to go down Proper, finding Lip's head, telling him to sit down real quick. Shock can still hold down on this low ground real quick and Proper can just reposition if necessary as long as Stalker doesn't stop him first. Yeah, at this point, Stalker has just been trying to wreak havoc in the back line of the Shock. And while you do have a little bit of mobility there for Vinding being able to swift step away, Finn is not so lucky. Wow. Especially if you have Hawk right there next to him to be able to follow up on that damage. Hawk is doing what Hawk does best, especially on this D.Va. You love to see it. And he could also just quickly get onto the high ground like you saw right there, too, so that we could clear some of that extra room after the rain, get to that first checkpoint. Going to be escorting that payload right over to that next corner. Yeah, you can see even just a quick step away there from Ch uh, Chio just to make sure that everything was going smoothly as those gates opened to allow that payload to move through. And Stalker with a big stick there onto jump in means that Shock delayed once again. Look at how far forward Hawk can play too. Knowing that the Diva Bomb is also online and ready to go, you could use that ultimate to be able to re-mech in case things get a little bit rough. But uh, let's see, EMP versus EMP. That's really the big ticket items that I have my eyes on. Oh, that's nice. Big first pick here too from Hisang. They know that Hisang's got that EMP ready too. Shock also know that too. The hack coming in, the EMP now coming in from Lip. 
Not getting the impact that they were expecting here, which is great news for the Shock because they can delay the momentum that we've been seeing the rain get around that next corner. They find Lip. Very similar to the first EMP that we originally saw in the first map. The same can't be said, though, for Hisai. He did find two with the EMP onto Fielder and Hawk. And after that, they also were able to get the follow-up onto Chiyo. So the trade working in favor for the Shock now as Hawk still holds down the reins in the front line. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of follow-up there until they're able to come out of spawn. And with a big ante onto Hawk, he really needs to back up here in case he does lose the mech again. That would set the rating back a lot, especially after throwing and investing so much into that very last team fight. Big pick on the Finn, though. You gotta see the follow-up here for the rain on top of that. Yeah, the rally into the rush on top of that, too. Junbin jumping right on top of them after they lost out on Stalker. Joe's been playing so nicely, not only around his bubble, but just in the repositioning, having to go from high ground to low ground, just going through the mega pack, through the side room too. Hawk falling low, as they have to wait out on Fielder. Lip also repositioning here too. They will have that pull spawn, but they don't have that rally because they used it for that last fight now. Yeah, they do have the support ultimates off the table, but I think that you're really looking at the pulse bomb from Stalker just having another big impact in this next fight. That pulse bomb was able to open up things a few fights ago, just looking at the stick onto jump in. Maybe Stalker's able to have a repeat success here, especially looking at Finn in the back line. There has a nano boost. So does Finn and Proper. It's that win con too with that nano blade that they want to work into. He said with the EMP would be huge here because it would deny Fielder and Chiyu if they could isolate the back line. Here comes the EMP. It does land onto Lip. Hawk goes to the reset on the Diva Bomb. Nice anti coming in from Finn. Can they prevent Hawk from getting back in? No, they can't. He was literally one. Proper pops a blade at the very end and still finds Chiyu and Stalker. That's the effect that they wanted as they force the raid to trickle in. They were holding on to the nano boost at least, and still they also have the EMP, but the shock really gave it their all for that fight. They emptied the tank on that one. It really looked like the EMP wasn't enough, and so they had to expend that other really big duo of ultimates in the Genji Blade and the Nano Boost in order to keep the Atlanta Rain from inching towards that second checkpoint. It, the cart's right there. But the Rain at this point have Lip in the back line, uh -huh. looking for the opportunity to hit their own EMP, and Vindam does not have the sound barrier yet. This could be really big for the Rain. Oh, Hawk with the Nano Boost put onto him, saves his life. It was so low before that, and with Stalker finding Finn, taking out the support out of the field. Stalker will come right back in, even though he found that trade between himself and Vindame. Lip coming in, too, with the EMP. Does find the Lucio player that is Vindame as Chio gets a follow-up. Atlanta Rain finally clearing out this payload so they can get that second point. We're limited on time here now as they try to reposition to get onto the high ground. Two and a half still minutes is still a lot to work with though, especially when you look at Chio having the Brigida rally coming up online. You know that's great sustain to get through the next fight when you're also looking at a huge sustainability from Jumpin's Primal Rage and Vindame's sound barrier as well. But Chio has a choice to make here. Do you save that rally to play a little bit more aggressively? aggressively after you've gotten a couple of the ultimates for the shock off the board. Oh, or do you just let Limp go grab some uh -huh. picks and then, yeah, just snowball from there? Oh, man. Limp. Still a problem. Chio having the rally on top of the Hawk about to get the primal. Shock could work into this, though, because they're about to get the sound barrier. You see Jumpin also with the primal. Keysang's waiting to call yeah. out the back line. You see Chio, you see Fielder right there. Gets the hack and the follow-up from Proper. That was beautiful follow-up after the hack onto Chio. But then immediately shuts down Proper. Fielder having to get away in time. The EMP only landing onto Hawk, but it's fine. Jumping gets a follow-up with the primal and still finds Lip and Soccer. GPS lineup out from the rain, having to reset now, regroup after coming down into the spawn. Yeah, there's still a little bit of a fight left in the Atlanta rain, though. Until Fielder gets taken out here, Hawk is going to want to try to quick make a quick getaway as Jumpin's just looking to get as much stagger as possible. Proper cleaning up what was left of Hawk right there, too. They're still holding on to everything in the tank this time around, Necro, for this next engagement. You have less than a minute now on the clock. Finn and Vindane, though, cannot get called out by Lip. They have the mana boost and they have that sound barrier for this final fight. Yeah, so ideally for this next one, you see Vindame hold on to the sound barrier for the EMP from Lip, and then San Francisco Shock get to follow up that next fight with the Nano Blade if they have it. Oh, the sound.
Sound Barrier comes in from Finn. Damn, the EMP did not land on him. It did land on Finn originally as he takes care of him. That's lip finding too for the initiation of this first fight here. Final fight, rather, for the end of this payload run. Hawk also still has the primal, and they needed to hold on to that because the spawn room doors are right there for Shaw. Yeah, you're also holding on to the nano boost as well as the rally if you're the rain for a response to the nano blade of the shock. We're entering into this final fight of this map and either rain are going to be able to clear it or the shock can stop them here. Let's see, nice anti onto Hawk. He pops in the primal now, tries to boop everybody away from the shock from contesting the payload. Overtime is going to be activated proper. Deflect real quick after Chiyo finds jump in. Nice EMP lands on the lip and stalker, but you have nobody from the shock to get the follow for he saying overtime taken away, and it still gives enough time for the rain to get the payload to the finish line. Now. There wasn't enough time for proper to use the Dragon Blade, even though that that Nano Boost was online. They needed it for the sustainability after Chio's rally just gave Rain so much extra HP to chew through. Really great stuff coming out from the rain. They've been playing for their economy and they've really been able to nail that down as we now have to look forward to a side swap. Shock's only hope to stay in this series is to complete the map and then win in our extra rounds. And that is a tall ask after seeing just how good the rain have been in this series. Just looking through the side of the shock, Hisang was doing a much better job at getting the follows with Proper, the communication really flowing out there. I liked what we also saw between Finn and Proper to the anti and the dash reset attempts coming in from Proper too. Got to see more of that did their best at forcing rain into overtime, but it just wasn't enough to fully hold them back from getting that pillow at the very end. We're seeing what they're going to be able to roll out with. I really liked Hawk too on this D.Va doing a really good job as we did see that quick swap at the very end to that Winston, but quick to help heal for Chio and Fielder if Chio's shield bash isn't enough mm -hmm. to contest he sang at the very end. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why we're seeing this difference in Sombra. Not only is it a difference in play style, but it's a difference in the support that each Sombra has. When you have the Ana and the Kiriko for the shock, you're looking at being able to get a lot of damage out quickly when you have access to the Kunai. And so we're going to see a change here from Vindame to go over to the Brigida as well. Just giving access to huh. the Shield Bash, the stun. Junbun taking off a big piece on the chessboard here for Rain. Nice first pick here. They do trade that for Junbin. Also saw in the back, Chio trying to check He Sing. He's trying to contest their back line. Hopper not getting off of this payload as he is sticking to the tracer. Trying to go for a different route here, too. Just trying to also enable He Sing so that way he could build into that EMP, the wing con that they really want to rely on. Big wind con here. And I think the shock really need a little bit more than just these ultimates as well. They need positioning on the high ground. They are going to be able to at least contest that on okay. the catwalk. This might be a good opening for them. Chunbin is him with those first two picks. Great start already here as Heesang tries to get that hack onto Hawk. Does lay it down as Fielder's about to get that Nana boost as well. So he's trying to rack up that EMP. Is able to get the hack as well on that small health pack over to the side, denying the healing opportunities from the ring as Hawk gets hacked again. Nice anti forcing him to get D mech, but even bigger pick from Stalker to get Finn. Vin Dame going down, no sustainability left from the shock. Meanwhile, Fielder is on the high ground getting away with everything here because he thinks not checking him. He hasn't been able to after you just saw the rest of the shock get wiped out. Yeah, the Shocker are going to have to go back to spawn and have to figure out how they want to approach this next team fight. The EMP is a great way to be able to kick things off, but it's not just their ultimates. They have to wait and see whether or not Rain pull the trigger first. Does Lip use the EMP? Atlanta Rain have way more setup time, so Lip likely gets the be able to pull the punch first. Let's see, Lip is trying to get into position. I like the positioning, though, specifically from the shot, because they're playing split up like this on purpose to prevent Lip from getting more of that output. He gets hacked, hacked for hacked. Oh, the EMP comes out from Keysing. Lip being able to get away, but not in.
in time before he said finds that 1v1 over in the back comes out on top soccer does now win that trade between proper did have that help with the rally here comes a nano boost vintame too had already used up that rally they lost out on vintame and proper and jumpin falls low but the nano boost helps him stay alive the rest of the rain now trying to play split up trying to contest the cart here too as Finn goes down it's another reset with the shock only having less than a minute now on the clock yeah, that's not much time left to go. He saying only got one person in an ultimate, and that was Lip. Lip able to re-cleanse that by teleporting away, and then you had just the follow-up of a lot of other things hitting the hitting the fan there. But Lip still has that EMP available. That was one high-value ultimate that did not get expended in that last fight, and that could be it. That could be it. Oh, Atlanta, Ray winning the no. map. <laughs> That's the difference maker, Necro. You saw that that EMP from He Sang in the previous fight didn't have the impact. He had that 1v1 with Slip. Sure, he could take that W, but Lip with the huge EMP finding for including the backline on the shock. While more time is wasted away, look at Lip now trying to still contest Finn. He is literally what he manages to survive somehow. Junbin off the map. See you later. Now less than 20 seconds on the clock. Yeah, Jumping got demeked there and had to go for a quick reset by jumping off of the map. And at this point, just needs to respawn and try to figure out how to play around this pulse bomb from proper. He's saying may also be able to get an EMP online, but if anybody on shot goes down here, that could be disastrous. Last fight for the fighting chance from the Shock here, potentially as overtime is activated. Stalker's about to get that pulse bomb ready. Fielder's about to get that nano boost. Jumpin does get hacked over on the other side. So the contention is he's saying it has an EMP, but a nice eat on the pulse bomb from Jumpin onto Stalker's pulse bomb. EMP landing on the lip and Stalker, but doesn't get the follow-up. Fielder still getting away with his high ground position here as he saying gets taken out. Proper fell low. Anti onto Hawk. You saw the EMP originally come in, but it doesn't do much as Hawk still manages to stay alive. And even if he goes down, he could go for the reset on this mech bomb, clearing up some more of that extra space. Vin matches the rally with Chio as he goes down. We're seeing the trades coming in, Necro. Still doable with the shock spawn being right there and jumping. Still up and alive and so healthy. The rain did lose out on Chio. They lose out on Lip and even in overtime and the Diva Mech reset, it is still doable for Shock. It is still doable. They've got to try to pressure away the rest of the front line of the Atlanta Rain, though. It looks like Hawk's going to go ahead and take a reprieve to try to get healed back up, and that's buying time for reinforcements of the Rain to come back into this one. Oh, he moves right on top of Hisek, prevents the hack from coming in here, too. Jumpin's still alive. They treat Fielder for Vintay. They want the Nano Boost, which is huge here. And now, Chio's literally what? I don't know. Oh, he's still alive. Stalker finding proper lift now finding Jumpin. The EMP builds up just in time from Hisek, but nobody left from the Shock to contest the point. That was such an insane final fight, Necra. The Atlanta Reign are just too good. They beat the San, Fr San Francisco Shock in a 3-0, and we got more 3-0 Watch, I guess, hold it. I guess so, but I mean, Atlanta Rain absolutely deserved and earned that. I, they, I can't believe they full held the San Francisco Shock on first point of Junkertown. That's absolutely wild. This was the title card match. These were the two teams that were at the top of everybody's power rankings heading into this week, and I feel like the results that we've seen, the play that we've had so far in just the opening week. We still have one more day. It's not over yet. But this is all going to shake up things a lot heading into week number two. And he sang heard us, Nakura, and did so well at the very end on that Sombra. I think he had 38 hacks in total versus what we saw from Lip. I believe it was like 27 at the very end there, too. Amazing stuff. There's still so much to look forward to from the San Francisco Shock roster. But the Atlanta Reign, the reason why they're on top of so many individuals' power rankings. We got to highlight a player, though, after that match, Nakura, and it's going to be Chio as the player of the match. All right, let's give some love to our support players because not only did Chio open things up in such a big way during this match by getting that environmental pick so early onto Finn, but even though Chio wasn't necessarily lighting up the kill feed, Boy, did everybody rally to him during these matches. I, the number of times that I saw Fielder actually gift the, the Nano over to Chio versus like Donghawk or even just to, uh, to be able to boost up the damage from Lip or Stalker, I felt like Fielder put the confidence in the right player. And his survivability also was absolutely insane. His healing output was there too. He was able to help put Stalker in the right position. 
Even getting that flame split snipe all the way from the high ground right there. You can't jump on top of Chio. See the amount of deaths he's had. It was four on average out here too, putting in that healing, the E limbs. But he did the job and he stayed alive when those rallies definitely were necessary for those very close final fights between the shots. Yeah, I think that this was just like that. You know, while we've seen Chio on mostly Lucio over the past season, seeing the Brigida and just seeing how much impact that Chio was able to have as a player, whether it was, you know, gifting over the cookies, the giant shield that Brigida has now. Yeah, I think you're safe behind Chio and safe in his hands. That's for sure. Wow, Necro, I was expecting this to go the distance. But I, I wasn't. think this has... <laughs> you you called it out, but man, these are two of the best teams that we've seen so far in the league. And I honestly, I was expecting to go toe to toe. I'm gonna toss it over to Death to have them break down the rest of the action. I want to get your I thoughts, guys, hear from them. For uh, sure. I got it because that was great. <laughs> great final series to end the day with here. Thanks, guys. Show. Zoe here joined by Danny, Jake and Jonathan. We're about to wrap up day number three of our opening weekend. And let's be honest here, not the banger that we hoped for. May I'm have called that. I we really tried. tried. We tried, uh, we tried. Well, that's not on you, that's on shock. You, you've done nothing wrong here. Like true. We, expectations I, were there. Uh, we no did think impact. that the shock is gonna fight back a little bit more than what we saw. But boy, should that make you excited if you're an Atlanta Rain fan. Yeah, Atlanta Rain is just too good. Too good? Too good. I think that's, I mean, I think we were all expecting this to be a close match, but it wasn't the case because Atlanta Rain looked too good. And, and you know, San Francisco Shock couldn't find a way to fight against them. Dude, someone should check on Avril. I mean, he's been hyping up the, uh, the O2 Blast uh, boys now, rookies here for the San Francisco Shock. And I mean, they they could, just couldn't keep up. They couldn't keep up to the tempo that Atlanta Rain was delivering. Jay. Yeah, from, from the superior contenders region, you know, just like... It, it That's so weird, yeah. <laughs> It's just like inexplicable. There must be some, something wrong. You know, but, but to be honest, I think for me, I, I love that Chio got player of the match here. I think the supports were so hard to kill. Even as Proper put on a, a master class, everything you could want from this guy. Did not miss a pulse bomb on Hollywood, fun fact. Um, got saved a couple times by nanos and stuff, but he didn't miss. So, you, I mean, that's pretty absurd stats from Tracer. Stalker, though, I will have to say, he kept up. He kept this fight going. He, he kept challenging. And I just think the overall firepower of the rain was too much. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think as well, like, Lip it was so impressive in the way he controls this matchup. He controls who are we targeting? When are we targeting them? When are we diving? And so he changes up the pace. Are we going to dive on top of the Hanso? Are we going to go, go for the back line? When can I go for a certain support target, for example? Like, oh, we can target the Brigitte because the Ana is busy healing the Winston or something like that. And Lip controls so much of what the Atlanta Rain are always doing every single fight. I mean, he's building towards an MVP case. I'm going <laughs> to keep saying it. Lip is the player to watch this season. Right on. I am on that hype train, but I've never left the hype train. I've been on the rain train uh, since since it started. Since it was True, built. you have that small train. I the did. Actually, I did actually have arena. a train. Yeah, you did. <laughs> there is a photo it's somewhere there too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, there there is there is receipts. Yeah, true. Exactly. Uh, now uh, we do of course want to chat to our winners. So Danny, you got an interview for us as well. I do. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Zoe. And we have Tonghak on the line for the post match interview. Tonghak 선수, 안녕하세요. Hello, Tonghak. Can you hear me? 들리시나요? Ah. 네, 안녕하세요. 들리시나요? 네, 들립니다. All right. So that, thankfully both of us could hear each other. Uh, I mean, this match like we just talked about, we expected it to be close, but it really wasn't. Atlanta Rain just dominated over San Francisco Shock. So I just want to ask like what was the game plan coming into this match against the San Francisco Shock? 자, 오늘 경 오늘, 오늘 경기 일단 많은 분들이 좀 굉장히 접전이지 않을까? 굉장히 어좀 어, 끝까지 가는 그런 경기가 아닐까라는 예상을 어, 예상 외로 오늘 아틀랜타가 너무 잘해서 3대 0으로 승리를 거두시게 되셨습니다. 오늘 경기 좀 어떻게 준비하셨나요? 어 오늘 경기 저희가 솜트를 제일 잘해서 솜트 위주로 잘한 것 같아요. 음. I mean, I think for this matchup, I think the the key winning victory thing for us was the Sombra Tracer. Uh, that is something that we are very comfortable and very confident in. So I think we did a great job playing that Sombra Tracer composition, and I think that's how we got the win. Um, also talking a little bit about you, Tongak. I mean, you are the only rookie that that joined the the new Atlanta Rain team. So being the only rookie, did 
Does that sort of put a pressure on you? Do you feel like you're pressured to sort of perform when you're playing uh, in a game? 자, 두 번째 질문으로는 또 동학 선수가 이번 제가 알기로는 아틀란타 새로운 아틀란타 팀에서 어, 신인으로서는 동학 선수밖에 없는 걸로 알고 있는데 아무래도 신인이기 때문에 조금 더 어, 부담감이나 좀 이런 거는 없으신가요? 아, 아니 좀 부족한 점들도 많고 그런데 내 형들이 필더 형이나 지 형이나 다 이평이나 쪽한 것들 좀 말해주고 게임 안에서도 좀 얼타고 있으면 말해줘가지고 그래서 더 편한 것 같아요 형들이 잘 말해줘서. 네, 알겠습니다. Uh, I mean, I definitely because I'm a rookie. There are some parts that are lacking for me, uh, for my, I guess, gameplay, so gameplay wise. But it doesn't really put a pressure because uh, all of my teammates, such as Fielder, Chio, and Lip, whether it's in game or out of the game, out of the game, they give really, really good feedback while it's while we're taking the break or even after the matches. They're always constantly giving uh, feedback for me to improve, so I don't really feel that pressure. All right, uh, Dongak, thank you so much for your time, uh, and yeah. Big congratulations on the win. 자, 오늘 승리 축하 다시 한번 드리면서 인터뷰 마치도록 하겠습니다. 동학 선수. 감사합니다. 네, 감사합니다. Thank you so much, uh, Donghak. And of course, congratulations to the Atlanta with a uh, victory. Atlanta rain for their victory. Sheesh. <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, no, that's fantastic to hear, honestly. Uh, like that, uh, you know, the veteran players taking him under their their wing, like the... Oh, their <laughs> wing. Phoenix. Okay, all right. Oh, you're happy about that one. <laughs> yeah, I think I redeemed the, the initial uh, intro back here. Okay. No, but I think that that's a great thing to say. Like, that's got to be feeling very comfortable. If you're coming into the league as a rookie and you're surrounded by veteran players, if they take care of you like that, yeah. give that feedback and make sure that you feel at ease and that there is no pressure on you, what a great spot to be I, in. I, I mean, Dongak is such an incredible story because like this guy came out of nowhere. Dongak has to just like wake up every day and just like, where am I? <laughs> like, I'm on the Atlanta <laughs> rain, me? Because like, truth be told, like Dongak was on one of the worst teams in Contenders Korea. Like they had a bad record, their play was all over the place and they didn't have any synergy when it came to the dives. So Dongek was really known as like a ranked player, like someone who dominated on Wrecking Ball in ranked play. And so Atlanta Rain, they saw that, hey, this might be a diamond in the rough for us. So they scouted Dongek up, gave him a chance in the offseason to get picked up. And here Dongek is just playing with legends like Lip and oh, he can't believe it. Yeah, I love mean, to it's see an that. incredible love story. To see that. Yeah, I mean, just like a phoenix, you know, started from the ashes, now he's here. I'm nailing it. One more. You're doing a great job. One more. You're doing a great job. One more. With Keep the Thunder there's a lot you can do. But honestly, this is a team to be excited about. These are players to be excited about and reinforce your headline of the day. Actually, does feature our very favorite team. They are. They oh, are. Wow. The Atlanta Reign, reigning supreme. So let's actually take a look, of course, what's ahead for the Atlanta Reign, because they got this huge win over the San Francisco Shock in today's match, 3-0. Well, what's next for the Atlanta Rain? Take a look at their schedule coming up. We got Atlanta Rain facing off against the Vancouver Titans. That's on Friday, May 5th. Should be an easy win, right? I think we can all agree that Atlanta Rain is the better team in that matchup. But then, the Los Angeles Gladiators, Kepster versus Slip. I mean, that's going to be a matchup for the ages. I don't even know where to like really go with this one. Atlanta Rain favored, but Gladiators, what do we think? I mean, I personally, I just think this this meta looks great for the rain. They look very comfortable on it. I mean, we heard it from Longhack himself. They they think they're the best Sombra Tracer team in the league. So I think for Gladiators, there's questions like, are they going to be able to hang in this meta? We know there's a lot of great players on that team. We know they have a lot of strength, but maybe this isn't their meta. So I, I would have to agree with you. Rain looks great in that matchup. All right. Well, I'm going to keep rooting for Kevster. Now, I want, <laughs> I want a non-Jake member of the panel to speak <laughs> up against the Outlaws, against the Atlanta Rain. That will be happening on May 12th. So, a couple of weeks away, but still, May 12th is going to be an awesome matchup between the Houston Outlaws and the Atlanta Rain. So, Danny, Zoe, what do we think? Atlanta Rain, Houston Outlaws, both teams, 2 0 -well record so far. I Who mean, do you got favored in this you, one? You might as well be introducing the grand finals here, because that's <laughs> yeah. how it feels, right? There's two yeah. absolute juggernauts with stacked lineups there, Danny. But I mean, at the same time, after seeing how Atlanta dominated San Francisco Shock, I honestly think Atlanta has the upper hand. All right. And well, I, I will be so angry if Jake doesn't predict Houston for that match. Oh, I think that, I mean, I couldn't agree more. That's like the closest thing we could guess as a title match right now. These look like the two best teams. From what we've seen so far, it's early days. 
Like, I'm willing to be impressed by other teams. I'm ready to, for, for other teams to show me other things. Maybe someone can break the meta, but this Sombra Tracer feels so dominant. And these look like the two most comfortable teams in the meta. Yeah, yeah and so. if we're looking at the back lines there as well, right? I, since Shu said that they're struggling there, right? That the, that the synergy is not quite there yet. You have to have faith in uh, the Atlanta Reigns back line because they will not have any issues. Those guys have been playing together for a long time. Yeah, that'll be a crucial factor, as I think Chio and Fielder were today. So I think if you, if those really are worries, I wonder how much he's not just being humble, I think he was being a great humble. teammate. <laughs> I'm um, just trying to steer drama. <laughs> I, I, which, which you know, we love to see. We love to see a little bit of drama, a little bit of excitement. I do think Violet can keep up. Uh, and Chu as well, but it is a good point. The synergy between them, even if they're both great players, the experience in, in knowing how each other's play, I mean, when the dive comes in, you have to just have a feel for where your other sport's gonna play, where you're gonna kite together. You really have to just be on the same page. There's no time to communicate. And so even though Violet and Chu are really great individual players, there is a question, are they just gonna be on that sort of like natural sync, immediately making the same decision, you know, mind meld, where Fielder and Chio, we can kind of predict that, that that's will, that is how it's gonna be. Absolutely. Now, Danny, your headline of the day leads us back to the game well, we, within the game. Game within Bingo. the game. And because because <laughs> I bring this up, this is my uh, my, game. my highlight of the day because we actually got a bingo. What? Wait, really? We did. Uh, we did. This quick, huh? I am not seeing the red. Johnny, can you help me? Where's the far red? Far in the right. Far in the right, buddy. Jonathan. There we go. This one? There we go. That's it. This one? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I see right here. Oh, thank you, guys. Right here. We got one right here. Right, this is the f player forehead cam okay, yeah. that we're in. Yeah. Soul yeah. Derby, yeah. We have right? Today too. Free spot, Brig also happened uh, as we talked about a day ago, right? And then Zoe slam dunks on other dust hosts. That actually happened, right? Zoe you slam dunked on. Took a lot longer than it should have. Also, it was a vanilla dunk. It was very vanilla. That was it was. That I was caught strays for the bingo card. You, you, know? you did Somebody it. You did it for it. the fans. Uh, yeah, that fans. was that was fan yeah. service. Honestly, we all dunked on Custa like day one, like minute one. True. So I feel True. like that yeah. should yeah. count still. Yeah. Custa is the one who's been taking the most heat, and he's not even here. It, yep. It's actually kind of savage. It's so we already yeah. got bingo, but there's another one that. We didn't fill out right here. Life Weaver pick actually happened go. today. Remember, guys, today? Yeah. We're going yeah. for blackout. There yeah. were yeah. a couple, a few even. Was it a yeah. few? Yeah. We you know. I think what's interesting is I I was kind of a Life Weaver doubter. I was wasn't sure. You know, where's what are those uses for this hero? It's not feeling so good. But teams have found you know two interesting different productive uses. The first one I think we'll start to see maybe more and more is just enabling this widow quick play out of spawn where people you know come up on the widow try to find a quick uh, uh, sorry a quick pick out of the spawn uh, and open the game up so we here we saw Houston running this so they platform up the widow she's gonna attempt to find a kill and then get pulled back to spawn when it doesn't work I'm not even sure this play is really worth it but whatever you're you not know, getting the pick come it's on, funny it's gimmicky this, though if you do get the pick but this guys this is what I want to talk about the real use for life weaver in your rank games when you're so much better than the other team that you just want to flex on them and play the weakest support like that's when you pick life weaver this hero is absolutely perfect for that role love it second use it's two a, uses I didn't a, believe there was one it's, it's used to make a statement then it's a step. He's a statement piece. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Follow with Soldier 76. I, wa I want to see more. Step, I want to see more Life Weaver. Tree of Life gives me life. Like I just want to see big Beautiful. trees in the middle of my maps. Just I want to see more Life Weaver on it's the enemy team in my rank games. Please wow, pick it against me. Wow, that is a lot to ask for. Please pick it against me. That's I would love to see it on the other roster. <laughs> Jake out here and trying to bait the free <laughs> kills. Why not? He's, why not? Why not? Uh, well, I thoroughly enjoyed that breakdown. Thank you so much, Jake. Great headlines, of course. It's only day number three of a season with many days filled with many plays. So let's actually take a look at tomorrow's schedule as we have some more coming our way. And we've got some bangers in that list there as well. Are we starting off with not that? Per se, uh, Vegas Eternal <laughs> going up against the Lord Whoa! Man. Whoa! Afterwards, London Spitfire will be going up against the Boston Uprising. And then we're coming to the interesting one I feel for our last day of our opening week Toronto Defined and LA Gladiators. So far, Toronto Defined, I think they've exceeded expectations. You know, I think they have. I do think they're going to be kicking themselves for not taking the win over Shock. I think that kind of was in their grasp and they let it go. Um, but I think really both of these teams are teams that aren't going to be satisfied with anything less than, you know, top four, top five placements in the league. Probably they want to be pushing even higher than that. And one of these teams is going to leave the week winless. And honestly, for either of these teams, either of these fandoms, that's going to feel unacceptable. And yet that's the world we're living in. So, I, I mean, this is a match with a lot of implications for the future.
That one actually has to be the one that goes the distance, right? We didn't get it today. I feel like it's it has to be. Right? <laughs> For sure, surely that's going to be the one. Let's that keep goes the expectations like. Do we, have, do we have seven 3 0s in a row at this point? Guys, yeah, we no, yes, flip it. We it's going to be a 3 0. I think we're going to get. I think it's going to be eight. Yeah, that's Probably, maybe nine. Gotta, gotta flip the jinx. Maybe flip the jinx. We can reverse jinx this. We need somehow. to reverse jinx it. It's exactly. going to be a terrible game. Whatever, man. Why don't we hit 10 oh, and then move on? <laughs> then, then no, Danny, no. Easy. Well, you know what, though? Like, one team is going to win yeah. and it's going to feel great for that team. And speaking of great things, yesterday we did announce our spring update for the Calling All Heroes program with updates on both the Challenger series as well as the Speaker series reinforced, which is super exciting. That's something we really enjoyed uh, last year. Yeah, we got an opportunity to take part of a panel and we educated some of the people about how to get into esports and what different roles there are in esports. So if you're interested in getting involved, working within the esports, then that panel is a great way of finding out more information. Absolutely. And if you want more information on the program as a whole, make sure to head on over to the website callingallheroes.gg. Uh, you can find out how to join the community, how to sign up for the Challenger series as a player, which uh, is something you, Jake, have been kind of involved with as well as you were coaching a team? Yeah, I love the Calling All Heroes initiative. It's awesome. I've been able to work with a team of some of my friends who are competing in the series and it's just awesome to see this group of players come together. The vibe is really positive. Everyone is like pushing each other forward, you know, bringing out the best in each other and everyone's, you know, wanting to compete and be the best that they can be, which is really the heart and soul of esports. And to have that really be accessible to a wider group of people is something I'm super passionate about. And I've just been, I feel really lucky to be able to participate with my, you know, little group of friends in that environment. Yeah, we've all been enjoying our time with the Calling All Heroes and there's so much more of that to come this season. So make sure to check it out over on the website. For now, we're going to say goodbye, good night. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will be back tomorrow. Same time, same place. See you there.